Hi, I'm Lauren Yosuyun, and in this video, I'll introduce one of the variants in network science model, which is stochastic Blanc model. The contents in this video will be the following. First, this is the conceptual framework, then I'll move on to introducing the general SBM. Third will be the key settings. Fourth it will be the recovery algorithms. Fifth, I'll introduce some community detection methods. And last but not least, I'll provide some open and unsettled questions in terms of stochastic Blanc model. First is the conceptual framework. SBM is a probabilistic generated model for random graphs. It is often used to model networks where the nodes can be grouped into communities or blocks based on some similarity criterion. In the SBM, the probability of an edge between two nodes depends on their block membership, with higher probabilities for nodes in the same block and lower probabilities for nodes in the different blocks. The SBM has been widely used as a canonical model for community detection. It is arguably the simplest model of a graph with communities. And since the SBM is a generative model for the data, it benefits from a ground truth for the communities, which allows to consider the previous questions in a formal context. In the flip side, one has to hope that the model represents a good fit for the real data, which does not necessarily mean a realistic model, but at least an insightful one. We believe that, similarly to the role of discrete memory-least channel in communication theory, the SBM provides such a model in a level of insightful abstraction. And this SBM can be used for a variety of applications, such as community detection, link prediction, and ge network generation. It is often used in conjunction with statistical inference techniques, such as maximum likelihood or Bayesian methods, to estimate the block memberships and probabilities from observed network data. Now I'll move on to general SBM. The core SBM is defined as follows. For positive integers n k and a probability vector p of dimension k and a symmetric matrix w of dimension k times k with entries in the range of 0 and 1, the model SBM defines an n-vertex random graph with labeled vertices, which each vertex is assigned in a community label, independently under the community prior p, and pairs of vertices with label i and j connect independently with probably w i j. And further generalizations allow for label edges and continuous vertex labels connecting to low rank approximation models and graph bonds. To first introduce the terminology, we consider a graph g of n comma epsilon, where n is a node set of size n and epsilon is the edge list of size m, the magnitude of epsilon. In the example, in figure 1, n can be denoted as 1, 2, 290, where n, the size of n, is 90, and m is 1192. We call a pair of nodes as a dyad, and considering the existence or absence of an edge for the dyad PQ, through the use of n times n adjacency matrix, which we can, which is illustrated in Figure Two. And this adjacency matrix is denoted by Y, which is another useful representation of the graph. If G, the graph, is undirected which is exactly this example, ypq equals yqp equals 1 if p and q have an edge between them, but 0 otherwise. So we can represent this kind of as an indicator function. And also, mrs, what represents the rs element of matrix m. By construction, under an undirected graph, y which is the adjacency matrix, is symmetric along the major diagonal. However, if G is directed, YPQ equals 1 or 0, uh, represents an edge 
0 in non edge from p to q and is also independent of y q p and also because of this construction y the adjacency matrix need not be symmetric we assume y p p equals 0 that is there is no node um, which is a self edge as this is quite kind of a very often phenomenon but of course not always assume the models are viewed the adjacency matrix for the example is shown in this figure 2 where black and white represents 1 and 0 respectively graphs with binary adjacency matrices are called also binary graphs hereafter in the sbm each node belongs to one of the k which is smaller than n groups where k equals 3 is illustrated in this example. As the groups are unknown before modeling, for node p, 1, 2, n, also defined as a k vector zp, and all elements of which are 0 except one that takes the value 1 and represents the group p, node p belongs to. For instance, as nodes 1 or 45 and 90 in this example belongs to group 1, group 2, and group 3 respectively, we have Z1 represented as 1, 0, 0 transpose matrix, the Z2 as 0, 1, 0, T, and Z3 as 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, T. And this can also be defined in a, in a N times K matrix Z, which will be the collection of Zs, such that Z, P, I, is the ith element of zp. The group sizes can also be derived from the matrix z and are denoted by n matrix, which is the collection of n's. Essentially, ni is the sum or number of non-zero elements of the ith co column of z. In this example, which is the image illustrated on the left side, n1 is 25, n2 is 30, and n3 is 35. Finally, the k times k edge matrix belongs a matrix between groups can be derived from z and the y matrix. And this is denoted by the matrix E, where E i j represents the number of, of edges between groups i and j in undirected graphs and from group i to group j in directed ones. In this example, E is, is symmetric as G is undirected. So for example, E11, which we computed before, is 245. E22 two is 341. E33 three three is 481. And because this example is, is undirected graph, E12 would equal to E21 will be 37. Another case would be E23, which would be the same as E32, would be 52, and also E13, which equals to E31, would be 36. In order to describe the generation of the edges of the graph G according to the groups the nodes belong to, we introduce a new notion of the matrix C, which is a k times k block matrix. If G is undirected for this constraint, and with this CIJ restraint, it represents the probability of occurrence of an edge between a node in a group I and a node in a group J. Here, C is symmetric. If G represents the directed graph, in this constraint, Cij represents the probability of occurrence of a directed edge from a node in a group I to a node in a group J, and C did not be symmetric. Whether G is undirected or directed, the idea of, of the block matrix C means that the dyads are conditionally independent given the group memberships Z. In other words, YPQ follows the Bernoulli distribution with success probability of this equation. And this is independent of YRS for PQ that is not equal to RS, given ZP and ZQ. And this holistic concept implies the total number of edges between any two blocks I and J is a binomial distributed random variable with mean equal to the product of CIJ and the number of diets available. Now we will start with the key settings that is necessary for the SBM. The first is stochastic equivalence. Stochastic equivalence is the assumption that the edge probability of a diet depends solely on their memberships, and this is based on the concept of stochastic equivalence. 
In less technical terms, for notes P and Q in the same group, P has the same and independent probability of connecting with note R as Q does. The next key setting for SPM is modeling likelihood. Given C and C, we can write down the likelihood based on the assumption of edges being Bernoulli distributed conditional on the group memberships. The left shows the equation of modeling likelihood if G is the undirected graph, and the right side of the equation shows when the graph is directed. Now we'll move on to the recovery algorithms. In the context of the SBM, the concept of recovery refers to the ability of an algorithm to correctly identify the block memberships of the nodes in the graph. More specifically, recovery refers to the ability of, to accurately recover the underlying block structure of the graph from the observed network data. In practice, the goal of using the SBM is often to uncover the block structure of a network when the true block memberships are a node. So recovery algorithms for the SBM are designed to estimate the block memberships of the nodes based on the observed network data. And these recovery algorithms are evaluated based on their ability to accurately recover the true block structure of the graph. And there are two commonly used measures of recovery, which the first one is misclassification rate, the second is normalized mutual information, NMI. And it is worth noting that recovery is generally more challenging in sparse graphs, where the signal to noise ratio is lower and the block structure is less pronounced. Additionally, recovery can be influenced by factors such as the choice of algorithm, the size and structure of the graph, and the underlying block probabilities. Now I'll introduce the key requirement for the recovery algorithm. It is the notion of agreement. Agreement between two community vectors, x and y, is obtained by maximizing the common components between x and any relabeling of y, which can be expressed as the, as the equation shown in the right side of this slide. Another approach to understanding agreement is based on the component-wise interpretation. And this defines the overlap between the two random variables, x and y. Based on the notion of agreement and the recovery algorithm, we can divide the types of, al types of recovery into three parts, the exact, almost exact, and partial. And the following recovery requirements are solved if there exists an algorithm that takes G, the graph G, as an input and outputs X such that are expressed in these equations. Different terminologies are sometimes used in the literature with, with exact recovery also referred to as strong consistency, whereas almost exact also referred to as weak consistency. Now in this part, I'll introduce the community detection methods. Without the pretext of statistical or probabilistic modeling, community detection can be, can be the goal of analyzing a network, which is to cluster nodes so that the edge density is high within a group and low between groups. And this concept is also called, called assortativeness. In the context of SBMs, this means that CII is high, where CIJ is low, where I and J are different components. The first method that I'll introduce for the community detection is the assortative SBM. One way of achieving community detection is to modify the SBM to align with this goal. In the assortative or affinity SBM, a constraint is imposed that CIJ will be expressed as delta when I and J are different components, where delta is a parameter presumed to be smaller than CII. While reducing the number of parameters in C, um, from k times k plus 1 divided by 2 in case of undirected graphs, or k squared in the case of directed ones, 2 k plus 1 may not significantly reduce the computational cost unless k is large. This implies assertiveness. However, it should be noted that incorporating assertiveness um, in SBMs is not a universal solution. This is the reason why I will introduce the next method for community detection, which is a non-probabilistic and modularity method. And this another way of achieving community detection is to step away from SBMs and apply the methods which are not based on statistical or, or probabilistic modeling, but mainly on heuristics. And this is has a iterative, iterative nature. For example, in the label propagation algorithm by Raghavan et al. 
Initially, each node is randomly assigned to one of the K groups. Then each node takes turn to join the group to which the maximum number of its neighbors belong, with ties broken uniform, uniformly randomly. And this iterative process continues until no node changes its group membership anymore. <coughs> Lastly, I'll end this video by providing some open and settled questions in this SBM. First is regarding the dynamical extensions. In some cases, the network can be dynamical and one may observe different time instances of the network. How can we integrate such dynamics to understand community detection? More simply put, how can we grasp the changes with more granular time scale of the dynamicity of the community communities? The second open question is regarding the scaling loss. What is the optimal scaling exponent of the probability of error for the various recovery algorithms? How large should the graph be in order to reduce the probability of an error? Another open question can be, what, are, what will be the efficient algorithms even for sparse graphs? Thank you for listening for this general overview of stochastic Blanc model. This was Lauren Hilsa-Jung.